typically when we think of human health and our bodies, we just think of ourselves and the, the human cells within us. But actually there are way more microbial cells in us than there are even human cells. There are all kinds of what we call microbes. These include bacteria, they include even what are called archaea, so these really ancient organisms. Also fungi and viruses. I'm Lindsay Backman, and I'm a Valhalla Fellow uh, at the Whitehead Institute. Pretty much all of us have bacteria that might be correlated or associated with some diseases, but their populations, their relative populations, are kept in balance by other microbes that are around. We have so many microbes within us that are constantly playing all kinds of roles. A lot of the nutrients that are in our food, we can't actually take advantage of. But the bacteria that are within us can use that to thrive. In some ways, microbes really train our immune response. The development of the microbiome at a young age is really important. There are even some more recently understood interactions between the microbiome and the brain. Some of these other really microbial rich communities include the skin microbiome. So you can almost think of the skin microbiome and all these microbes that inhabit our pores as this like kind of added layer shielding our bodies. Other environments that are really microbial rich are for example the vaginal microbiome. The oral microbiome is also a really important microbial space. Another area that we're very excited about is this question of both developing effective probiotics and developing new antibiotics. A lot of our antibiotics today act like a sledgehammer. When you kill one you know, infectious bacterial species, you're also killing a ton of your good bacterial species. It would be really amazing to get to a point where we could develop more targeted antibiotics that could inhibit and hurt the disease-causing bacteria, but not simultaneously kill all of your good commensal bacteria at the same time. One of the biggest issues with probiotics right now is that a lot of them just don't stick in the gut. Really figuring out how to make those bacteria stick is a big question in the field. We're also filling in medical gaps. I'm actually talking about drugs that are used to treat what we think of as strictly human diseases. So for example, recently there is a study that showed that certain types of bacteria could degrade one of the most common drugs used to treat cardiac diseases. And it had been known in the field for a while that certain patients just didn't respond to this cardiac drug. And it turned out that those patients had a lot of the species that then could degrade the drug. So one thing that really fascinated me was the idea that we have so many different levels of oxygen within our body. There actually are a lot of bacteria that prefer anaerobic, so oxygen-free conditions, or even just lower oxygen conditions. In different environments, such as the skin, in the oral microbiome, you have a lot of what we call microaerobic, so low oxygen conditions. Within the gut, there's really a gradient of oxygen. When you get down to the lower GI tract, you'll have a lot of strict anaerobes. These are actually species that evolved in a pre-oxygen world that are really abundant within us and impact our health. So some of these include archaea. So these are species that are often thought to live in extreme environments. So in hot springs or in uh, the deep sea. These actually also thrive really well in the human gut. One of the reasons I really wanna look at these more oxygen vulnerable pathways and also how bacteria might be using strategies to protect them is that we might have a better idea of ways we could tackle these specific bacterial strains. We have been ignoring a lot of oxygen sensitive chemistry that could be really good antibiotic targets. All of the chemistry that is being done by any form of life, including bacteria, require these large molecules, proteins that can do chemical reactions. And these are called enzymes. Enzymes are involved in the metabolism 
of bacteria. They're basically using the nutrients that they can take advantage of to make energy. A lot of the enzymes that bacteria rely on are very vulnerable to oxygen. We wanna study specifically how some bacteria have basically evolved to protect themselves from oxygen. A lot of pathogens rely on BMCs, bacterial microcompartments. And so we wonder if by providing this shield to those oxygen vulnerable enzymes, they get a little bit of a competitive advantage. They can take advantage of that really cool and powerful chemistry that other bacteria might not have that protective ability for. We installed a piece of equipment that I'm super excited about. It allows us to infuse controlled flows of oxygen. And so we can grow our bacteria in those more in-between types of environments, which honestly might be more similar to the amount of oxygen that microbes encounter when they're in the human microbiome. We might discover pathways that are good targets for antibiotics and maybe even could target a narrower group of bacteria instead of being an antibiotic that is going to kill all of your good bacteria on top of that troublemaker bacteria. We're interested in potentially engineering species that do have these bacterial microcompartments so that maybe those bacteria have a better chance of sticking in a microbiome, especially in these diseased states where a probiotic would be helpful.